What's up YouTube? I'm just another guy and welcome to my Parks of Premier League here with Billericay Town FC. Uh, back down where we don't want to be. We're back in League 2 after a disappointing season last season where we got relegated from League 1. But things are, are once more moving in the right direction as we are currently sitting in 3rd place in the league. So we played 28 games, won 14, drawn 10, lost 4, scored 43, conceded 23 with a plus 20 goal difference. So at least we are back in the automatic promotion spot. Realistically, I would want to win the league. I know that's kind of being picky then when you say at least you got promoted. But I've yet to win anything with Billericay so far. So I feel we've the, strong, the squad is strong enough to challenge for the title this season. And it may be our only chance for a long time to challenge for a title. So it's important that we can at least mount some sort of challenge. And at least, and at least that way it will make it easier to say we got promoted. Uh, as well, currently we have two games in hand, which is six points, which means if we do win them two games in hand, we can get 57 points up on the... 57, sorry, I can't count today. 58 points on the board, and we'll be one point off the title, so still very much alive. Uh, we're currently drawing points with the same points of Exeter. Goal difference is making it the reason we're sitting in third, and we are four points off of the eighth place, which is just outside the relegation zone. So it's all tight in League 2, as it always is. But the main thing is we're currently sitting in third, which is the good position. Uh, past positions will tell us the story of how we're doing. For some reason, all of these are out of place by one. So really, that's 20, uh, 21st and yeah, whatever. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so as you see, for a long time, we've actually been up here in and about there. From about um, it's that 13 games in, we've been in and about the playoffs all the time. So it obviously, say, it obviously shows that we are playing a consistently well consistent form again i changed the tactic away from a 4-2-3-1 back into a simple 4-4-2 which is something i haven't done since the first season at billericay and it's worked out well it's worked out in um in our favor since coming down and before i actually show you that tactic and the fixtures we're going to go into the um transfers and people who brought in and out so liam palmer has been chased because we we're in january by five days because i forgot to uh save it <laughs> before five days so um yep uh, I've rejected that because, of course, Liam Palmer is one of our great, uh, one of the best players outside right now, so I can't let him go. Anyway, the outs, of course, you know about Adam Noble leaving to join Leeds. He's currently got a, a cap for Scotland, so he's moving up in the world. And for Leeds right now, he scored six goals in 23 games, so he's not as he's not scoring as many goals as he has here. Maybe they're not using him in the same way we are, but um, I hope he does well in his career because of what he did for this club and how he helped us. A couple of people left: Fasil Hamati. He left uh, the Afghani. He'd been with us since the start. And to let him go now, I decided uh, last season when I was in League 1, I was going to let him go. Despite the fact we got relegated and he, I could probably use him a bit more. When we got into the Football League, as you can see in the history, he just started falling out of favour with me. And I decided that um, I'd let his contract die out. He had quite a long time con long um, contract with us still to kill. But I thought at least he's there for backup and I let him go. And he's yet to find a club, so I probably I probably think he'll end up retiring before he finds that club. I don't know. Uh, Jack Botham went to Shelburne. Uh, Ren Howe went to uh, Derry City. Alfie Mawson finalised his deal with Linfield for 875k. Elsewhere, a load of youth players that never made it were released, and two players were loaned out in Russell Backford, who we signed last season. And Jez McCauley was loaned out as goalkeeper once more, and I doubt he'll ever make it now. He's 22, really, he would have been pushing into the first team. He made uh, two league appearances for us this season and one in the cup, which I'm quite happy with. He played very well, but I just don't think he'll ever make it, really. He's got some half-decent stats on him, but I feel we can get better. So I'll end up probably letting him go next season as his contract does run out at the end of this season. Anyway, the ins, I decided that I want to move away from the loan focus and start getting more people in full-time. I did end up loaning in four players on the end of the season loan, so I maxed out my loans again this season. But only one of them is my first choice. Two of them are sort of rotation with other players, because fitness is, of course, always uh, something you have to keep an eye on at the lower level. And one is just for backup. So I'm all right with that. I'm happy with this. So our first one was uh, Jason Glynn, who is our first choice right mid. We lacked a bit of quality on the right. And Jason Glenn, as you see there, is our first choice. Liam Palmer is a centre mid, so he's not even really in contention for that. And Mel Hackney is a pretty bad player. Uh, so Jason Glynn there is a coming in as our first choice. And he's got some good stats on him. I mean, his pace is quite good. He's got good teamwork, work rate, off the ball, flair and concentration, which is stuff I like to see. His technique is very high and dribbling and crossing isn't half bad either. So he's a half decent player in that sense. Our next signing was Seb Paul, a left back. 
Uh, we already have quite a good left back in Tommy Lomas, but Seb Paul is here, gives us again another option who is good enough and helps help us to rotate that left side of the field and prevents tiredness becoming an issue. His main stats here are pace, of course. His tackling and attacking stats like crossing and dribbling aren't as high as I'd want them to. But like I said, he's, the rota he's one of the rotation players. Only on £525 a week. He's relatively cheap. Mel Hackney, I've already shown you before. He's not too great of a player, but just offers a little bit, some a little um, backup option on the right, which we desperately needed at the start of the season. As you see, that was one of my first priorities, get the right side sorted. Uh, Rob Flint coming as a striking option. His pace is pretty much the only thing on him. He's got some decent potential on him, apparently, although I do really doubt that, considering the fact he's 23. But so far this season, he's been on all right form, scoring eight goals, showing that pace can sometimes make a difference in this game. A so, bit like FIFA, <laughs> he's pretty much a pace haul, which is all this guy is. But somehow it's working, he's getting enough chances and getting enough goals, so I'm not fussed. Uh, David Ball, come in as a backup striker, a bit of experience there. If I ever need him, he is always there as backup. Uh, he's, he's an alright player, as you see here, he's got some decent stats on him. Uh, he's played at Fleetwood as well at this level for consistently, now for God knows how many years, I can be able to count that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's going to be nothing more back up, and I don't think he's actually played, did I? I didn't actually see that there. He's made 10 appearances, uh, 8 subs and 2 starts, yet to score, so of course, showing he's not, got, he's not too great of a talent. But for backup, I can't really complain. Uh, Leiden Seaman. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, backup centre back come in. Uh, Mick Meller is our first choice along with Anthony Foster. Leon Cooper, I'll show you in a second, is our third choice and offers again another good rotation off, um, option. Uh, so Simon has just come in to pretty much back up. Uh, he's got some good uh, strength, jumping, heading, and tackling on him, which is some of the key stats you need for a centre back anyway, so I don't think that's too bad of a signing. Uh, Jack Colbeck, again, another ex Premier League player. We've signed a few of these so far in this um, career that we're doing. Uh, he's got some good tackling, passing, marking. Uh, he's a centre mid, he's going to come in. His mental stats, I always love to see good mental stats on a centre mid. It doesn't matter too much to me about their physical. If they've got um, decent at, uh, technical and mental, I'll always love them having, I'll always accept them coming in. So, of course, he's played in Premier League now, an uh, on-off player in Premier League and Championship for the past uh, few seasons. So, he's come in at this level and played very well. So, I'm happy with that. We're not paying any of his wages because he's on 17.25k a week. I can't afford any of that. I mean, my whole wage budget is less than he paid a week at Fulham. Uh, Aaron Bayer come in as a backup right back again. Nothing more can really be said. He's got some a few decent key stats on him, but apart from that, he's not too great. Uh, Liam Cooper come in as the third choice centre back, and again, a good rotation offer option. Uh, Coming on loan from QPR, he's been on loan at this level two um, other seasons as well, so he's got some experience on him. There and again, some good key stats: marking. I mean, yeah, marking, tackling, heading, strength, jumping, and his mental attributes are very good as well. So, I think that's a good loan signing. Again, none of his wage. How much is he on actually a week? Nine point two five k. These guys are on a ridiculous amount. Again, QPR become another source of a loan. Uh, Liam Griffiths, of course, some people may know him uh, for the Hibs, where he's currently at and scoring some good goals. <laughs> and um, in this game, he went to QPR and struggles break into the team for them. I signed him in. He's got five goals so far. He's pretty much a backup player, though. He's started 14 times, but as of recently, I've started playing him a bit less and stuff like that. Uh, he's got some very good stats on him, though. His pace, acceleration, finishing, composure. They're very good. They're really good for this level of football. Surprisingly, he hasn't played as much games as, at a higher level. And I was surprised to get him, but when you look at his report, apparently it's not very good. So, I don't know. It's kind of strange to see a player like that play at this level of football with some of them stats. Steve Arnold come in as a uh, backup goalkeeper. He's played a few times as well because Nile Everidge, um, Neil Everidge, I always call him, uh, is it Nile? I've oh, got damn it's Neil, is, I don't know. <laughs> Neil Everidge has gone out international um, football a few times, so I've, he's been unavailable for selection. So he's come in, I've done an alright job, three clean sheets. Uh, Conceded about a goal a game, that's not too bad for a backup goalkeeper. And again, played at a decent level, I'm not too fussed, and he's only on 40, £425 a week, which is quite little. And our last signing was Darren Graydon, who has just come in as a backup goalkeeper. Again, got a bit of potential on him. I really do lack, doubt that, though, considering the fact he's 23. I'm not too sure how he will develop. He's played for Shelburne a lot. Um, played for Shelburne uh, as first, first team quite a lot. His contract expired, so I thought I'd snap him up on the um, pre-contract arranged deal thing. And he should start in the next game. So, to the fixtures. If my mouse wants to start working, there you go to the fixtures. I'm quite happy with how things have gone. As you see, I scrolled up there. 
Not many losses are on there. First game of the season, we won 2-1 against Sunderland, who are currently a championship team. They were in the same division as us last year, so it's sort of weird facing each other, considering now we're two, two divisions apart. Will Brewster had an absolutely fantastic game. It was a beat a championship team at our level. Considering we've just gone down, I was chuffed a bit of it, and it showed some great character. And I knew, I knew from this point on it was going to be a good season. If we can beat Sunderland, it's going to be good. Uh, we then lost to Barrow 1-0, first game in the league. That was disappointing for me. We could have done a lot better. Then we won two games in a row, beating Southend 2-0 and Dartford 2-1. Liam Griffiths picking up a double there against uh, Dartford as well. Quite a key point. And then again, we beat a Premiership team this time, which is even better than last time. We managed to outdo ourselves. Whole City just got promoted to the Premier League. And to face them away from home, Ole Ye Lull to score a... Um, Injury time winner. He didn't even start the game as well. I brought him on. I was caught doubting whether I bring him on. He was a right midfielder as well. His natural position is a striker. So for him to come on and bag the goal like he did. Let's actually look at that goal because I went a bit mental when this went in. Considering the fact we went 1 0 down, Liam Griffiths scored in the 45th minute to equalise. Then Oye Lull come in and scored in the extra time. It was absolutely amazing. You'll see a great ball down the wing any second now from Colback. He Cuts through the defence and then gets his one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Hits the post and goes in. That was an absolutely great goal. And I, I enjoyed that a bit too much, maybe. Uh, then we drew to Fleetwood. I think Tyler sort of kicked in at this stage, though, because we didn't have a week to rest. So a 0-0 draw at that time wasn't too disappointing. We then beat Bournemouth 4-0 in a massive result. Jason Glynn getting two. Will Brister and Anthony Foster as well. In a dominant performance without the possession, though. Something that is quite a common occurrence. Then drew two games on the bounce. 1-1 and a drawing 2-2 against Bristol Rovers and Shrewsbury, respectively. Uh, then beat Halifax 2-1. Will Brister getting a double, which I like to see because uh, he's now pushed as a striker for the first time in a long time, actually, because he's a natural striker. However, for the past couple of years, few, three, three or four seasons, I've always played him as a right winger. So I needed him to step up this season, and he's done it so far. Then beat Walsall 2-0. Liam Griffiths and Jonas Dialo getting a one each. Uh, then lost to Swansea 3-1 after extra time. Again, I'm really proud of this, despite the fact they had 41 shots against us. 20 on target. We had to play very well defensively just to manage to get it to extra time. But then tiredness did kick in for us, sadly, and they managed to just dominate us from then on. What disappointed me even more was the fact they got a man sent off in the 90th minute. So really, we had that extra man advantage for 30 minutes, but we couldn't make it count. They have somehow did. Christian Benteke and Paco, I'm guessing, is a regem. Yes, a very good regen scored for them. But despite the dominance, we managed to match them on possession. And I'm very happy the fact that we even got to the third round of the Capital One Cup. Yeah, we then bounced back after that. I say bounce back. I say, again, tiredness would be an issue at this point. So to draw 1-1 um, with an injury uh, injury time goal right at the end of the game, I'm very happy with. However, we couldn't continue that on as again. Three games in the amount of... Uh, three games in a week, including the fact that we played an extra time in one. We lost 3-0 to Rotherham, and I can't complain too much about this. It was pretty much a second team at the time, so oh well. Uh, then bounce back again, though. 2-0, our first win in a while, with Liam Griffiths and Jason Glynn getting two on the score sheet. Ca uh, the Johnston Paint Trophy, we went in for the um, first time this season, and it's a trophy. I've, I said this, a few, I said this uh, thing every season now. It's a trophy I want to win at this level. It's a very achievable target for us, I think. With the squad we possess. So we won 2-0 against Stevenage. Who are in the div same division as us. I was going to say division above. They just got relegated as well though. Jones Diallo and Rob Flint. Picking up two goals there in a the game. that uh, Stevenage dominated. So for us to come out with the win. I'm very happy with. Uh, we then lost 2-0 to Northampton. No, we couldn't continue on. Another loss in the league. Which is something we need to cut out. Then we got on a long unbeaten run in the league. As you can see. We started off drawing 1-1 with Yeovil. Then two wins in a row. Winning 4-0 to Carlisle. And 2-0 to Exeter. We're losing the FA Cup first round to Wrexham. This was a result that disappointed me. Wrexham, who are a decent league one side, have to be said, but um, I felt that we could have gone through to the next round of the FA Cup, and the FA Cup is more important to me, and I would like to progress in the next round. However, in the game, they did dominate us. They did smack us about, and they deserved their win. But going into the match, I felt we could at least come away with a result, considering what we've done in the League Cup, so in the Capital One Cup so far. Oh, well. I guess it's just a cup. Luck of the cup is always around. Uh, then we bounce back, a win against Oxford 2-1 with Will Brister and Rob Flint getting two in 11 minutes after half time, one before half time, one after half time. Uh, Forest Green we drew to them nil nil. 
nothing more to be said about that really. Uh, we then beat Bradford at home 3-0, Drew Hopkinson, Rob Flynn and Ole Yal in injury time, giving us a 3-0 comfortable scoreline. Then Trude 2 on the bounce, drawing to Aldershot 2-2 and drawing to Tamworth 0-0. Then beat Lake Orient 1-0. Rob Flint getting the um, only goal of the game there, earning us a three points. Then beat Stevenage 2-1. Tim Jacobson getting a rare goal for us. Ended up uh, being the winning goal as well, having them got one back, did they not? Yeah, they got one back um, in the second half, but a sending off for them ended up making it that slight bit easier towards the end of the game. Then drew one. We then drew 1-1 with Swindon in the cup, but penalties proved to decide us and I went through really luckily we went through um Will Brister took the lead but a really late own goal from Mick Miller surprisingly gave them their chance of a penalty shootout uh Ole Yarl, Will Brister Jason Jason is it is it Jack Jack Colback um lose I'm forgetting all these people's first name Liam Palmer and Cooper getting the goals for us in the penalty shootout which proved to be enough as they miss three and we only missed two. So it went to sudden death and it was really was a bit of a tense game. Then lost 2-1, which is our last loss of this update. With Ole Lal getting a consolation goal in the end. Then we go on a win. Uh, then we go on a bit of a streak. Win, draw, win, draw, win. With winning 2-1 against Barrow. Drawing 1-1 to Fleetwood. Winning 3-1 to Bournemouth. Drawing 1-1 to uh, Bristol Rovers. And just today we won 3-0 against Portsmouth. Will Bristol getting two and Ole Lal getting one. In a game that I'm very happy with, because I, I always say this every time, Portsmouth to me are a big team. And with people like Matt Ritchie, we're on their squad, I will never not look at them as a big team. So uh, that's it. That is what has happened so far. I've just changed it to that. I always have to see the goal scorers. So that's what's happened so far, and I'm very happy with how things have gone. Uh, the tactic we are playing, I've meant to show you with a 4-4-2 with a target man attacking Will Brister, an advance forward or a poacher, depending on who we're playing um, up front in that position, that will change. We're playing an advanced player maker in Liam um, Palmer, but that changes with uh, Andreas Pierre as well. Uh, of course, Jason Glynn will be on the right as a winger attack. Dialo plays left mid. Colback and Palmer actually plays in that deep line playmaker defense role. We play with two limited defenders and two fullback automatic roles. The team is pretty bog standard. I rarely change this too much, just because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's anything more wrong with leaving a tactic as default. And this is the team. So I'm very happy with how things are going so far. Let's go into our copy of selection info and have a look at things. So our top goal scorer so far this season is Jones Dialo from the left mid, and a Will Brist. Oh, sorry, assist. Sorry, this is uh, our top assist is Jones Dialo. From the left and Will Brister up front as well, playing that target man role. His idea is to bring people into the game, and he does that very well for us, as well as Jason Glynn on the right. Goals are coming from Will Brister and Oye Low up front, so the partnership is working with 20 goals, um, with both of them combined total of 20 goals. I'm happy with that. Them two are replacing um, Adam Noble, which was needed. And clean sheets, Nile Everidge has kept nine, he's currently out injured, and he's played 127, uh, 125 games for the Philippines. But I'm happy with him so far. Uh, let's go into awards. Do, 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 do. Goal of the month. I don't think we've got a goal of the month. Nope. Uh, goal of the season. Uh, what am I doing? Looking at that. <laughs> manager of the month. Uh, we have not got manager of the month. We've got like, yep, we've got third in November, October, and that's it. As you see, a regen manager there. Gareth Barry, all the shot. Uh, manager of the, why am I looking at that again? Manager of the year. Manager, player of the month. We got anywhere in that? Um, I doubt it. I actually do doubt that we have. Nope, no one in that. Uh, top goal scorer is nothing. Young player of the month, we got any of that? Nope, none in that either. So, stats wise, how are our players doing in comparison to the league? Top goal scorer, we're not anywhere near that. Late Orient are on top. It is that McEachran? I don't think Josh McEachran then from Chelsea. Uh, team stat wise how are we doing in that we've scored some of the highest we can see some of the least so that's very good for us showing the team is quite strong attackingly and defensively Atten average attendance as is very low still 2442 22nd lowest in the league and that contributes to our financial worries which I'll show you in a second salary per annum it's the lowest in the league despite just being relegated we still don't spend a million pounds and they actually taken a massive wage cut in comparison to last season I'm very happy with the the fact that we are working on a small budget because um, really we're just paying the key players the wage they want and getting a load of backup that aren't very good but are on a 
basically near to nothing wage. And financially, you see that the um, selling of all the players has helped us out massively, but we're taking that slow dip down now and it's projected we'll lose a lot of money by the end of the season. We're still paying off all of our bank loans. I'm hoping maybe if we can be in League One by the time these things run out, these sponsorship deals, that they'll be able to bring us in more money and stuff and that'll help towards maybe paying a bigger wage budget next season and things like that if we get promoted. Uh, anything else I need to show you? I think I need to show you staff. I think I brought some staff in. We brought in Neil Ashton as a. Wait, is that? No, no, that's, that's um. I was thinking of the ex West Ham guy. What's his name? Ashton, isn't it, or something? I don't remember. Um, yeah, Neil Ashton's coming as our head of youth development, and Andrew uh, Colbert left as our head of youth development. Anyway, uh, tactics why not tactics why. Training-wise, these are the people I have. So Matthew Nem is our goalkeeping coach. Graham Graham Montgomery, Barry Roach, Mike Willows four four and a half star. As you see there, everything at the bottom is four and a half star, apart from shooting, which is Nick Stanley, who I'm considering letting go when his contract expires because I don't want to pay the compensation. It should be the end of the season anyway, so we can push everything up to four and a half star. Maybe even get rid of Phil Neville and. Uh, Paul Hilton, I'm not too sure. I'm, I like my assistant manager. He's pretty good. I'm not too sure. Unless I, unless I see something better out there, I'll keep him here. So, I think that is it. Any major landmarks at the club? No, do, 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 do. Nope, nothing major landmark there. Um, Mick Miller is now an icon. Alfie Mawson's favourite person of Adam Noble. They'll probably disappear after a while. I'm not sure. Media prediction was fourth, so I'm happy that we are getting third. We're overachieving there. And this is it, basically. But um, bum So until next time, when I, hopefully I'll have some good news about getting promoted from League Two into League One. Peace out.